What is going on, everybody? Welcome in to the North End Podcast, episode 14, our Diego Fagundes episode. And also, I think the number of beers I had last night. My name is Zach Graham, the host here on the North End Podcast. Still on a high, an exhausted high from last night's semifinal win over FC Dallas, which I got to view, take in, in Section 123, alongside my good buddy, on record as my best friend. It's Ian Michaud, a.k.a. E, a.k.a. E. James, a.k.a. Sebastian Drew. EC, E, how are you feeling today? Because I, I don't know if you, I think you said you took the day off, so maybe you got to sleep in, do a little self-care. Not not the same for, I can't say the same for myself today. Full day of work, but uh, again, still feeling amazing. How, how about you? Uh, no day off. Uh, okay. I, I did my, I did my job, my work today. Um, I got a bad, I got a bad knee. My knee. Um, yesterday? My knee. Yeah, dude. When I fucking fell walking into Captain Morgan's oh, club, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my knee hurts bad. Oh, like, I forgot you did I that. Landed right on my fucking kneecap. Uh, yeah, so I was walking into Captain Morgan's club and uh, <clears throat> my shoes got caught in a stool. Yeah, or one shoe got caught in a stool, and uh, it wouldn't have taken a lot to take me down at that point. <laughs> But uh, that stool took me down pretty quick. Uh, yeah, fell down, collapsed, smashed my knee. Uh, pop right up. You did. Uh, the the kind beer man. Yeah, whoever was serving right there. Gave me a fresh beer. And was like, yeah, hey, just man. handed you one. <laughs> He's like, yo, dust it off. And I was like, all right, I'm going to be okay. Yeah, what a guy. Yeah, he was a great guy. So shout out to that guy for sure. Um yeah, I mean, I'm feeling great. Um, I've been going over scenarios in my head how we could get to L.A. and, uh, if, you know, hitchhike or, or some sort of, you know, bike ride maybe if we have to do it to get out yeah. there, watch this other game. Uh, but <laughs> my uh, first ever playoff experience, uh, fantastic. Couldn't ask for much more. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't think either of us – really cared how we got it done, just survive in advance. And, and Austin FC did just that. Um, I did want to talk about with you for a minute though. Um, Cause again, we didn't really get to communicate today. Obviously we were hanging most of the day yesterday, but getting there early, I think that was the earliest we'd ever shown up for a match. And I know we were still came in behind probably about 13, 14,000 people like this. Day. Obviously yeah. the supporter section has been filling up, I think it was like an hour and a half before that first game last Sunday. And I think like 50 minutes before kickoff last just night. Incredible. Yeah. 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 Awesome. The support is incredible. Not of course, not just from the South end, although they are the engine, uh, you know, of the, the enthusiasm uh, in the stadium, but yeah, man, like being there that early, like obviously you and I feel like we have perfected our mm. travel schedule from pre-gaming getting to our parking spot, walking over, road walking beers, you know, uh, Mm -hmm. getting to the stadium after the rush, but before the official kickoff, you know, in beer, pee, seats, first, you know, right as we kick off. But like showing up early to these two playoff games, because Jose and I last week also showed up fairly early. um, Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's different. Like it's, I think it's more rewarding for us in the playoffs to do, to get there early because, Obviously, the buzz in the stadium is something else for these matches. Um, but, like, I felt like everybody was there early last night. Like, we got there. Like, Damon's yeah. already at the seat. Of course, Brian and Mike are there. Um, Dave was already there. Which he, Dave doesn't beat us there every time. And, again, yes. we, try to show, we try to show up right on time. Yeah. Um, our buddy Wacker was there. Uh, shout out Jay and Kat for giving Wacker their, their extra seat. Um yeah, man, there was just and Marco was there. Shout out my my old coworker Marco. Yeah, uh, man. He came down from Chicago. Um, it was a it was a party even before the game started. Yeah, it is. It's nice and it's a little dangerous just because you can <laughs> really get to drinking. Yeah, uh, but then yeah, it was nice. It, it was good to see the warm ups too. We we got to do a little pregame heckling. Get the mm-hmm. 
you know, get the crappy jokes out of the way. <laughs> get warmed up ourselves. Get, get warmed up, get loose. Um, no, yeah, I really enjoyed it. And obviously stadium's packed, stadium's rocking. It was it was something else. It was a it was a whole experience. Yeah, so I mean, and then once the game kicks off, I guess I don't want to get to uh the actual game just yet because somewhat of a surprise TIFO <laughs> yesterday. I don't mm. uh I, I think that was kept mostly through the week, mostly a secret. Um, certainly when I first caught wind of it early last week, it was like, Hey, don't, you know, keep it under wraps. Um, and that was cool. That was the first TIFO that we haven't like raised up on the, the wires and pulleys and stuff. And it was like unfurled down the middle of the supporter section. And then they had those banners too on either side. And then they, and then I will take credit, like, the supporter section is not the first uh, people to throw the biodegradable confetti. That's our thing. That's true. <laughs> in the North end. And, but I was, yeah. I was really happy to see that they were throwing that from the top. And some of that made it like all the way to yeah. like midfield. Almost midfield um, for sure. It was. And then, and then uh, they also changed the, the lights were going. It wasn't just like all Verde. It was like the Verde was kind of going around with the white lights and just like the whole effect. Um. Again, shout out to everybody who pitches in on that stuff, yeah, whether you're true. you're part of the planning, you're part of the, the painting and the organizing, or actually getting it, you know, unfurling it yeah. when it's time, uh, pregame. And, and, or, you know, some people I'm sure involved in all facets, um, shout out to, to everybody involved in that, just, you know, upping the, the game day experience uh, for yes. the biggest game in club history. It was very much appreciated. It was cool. Yeah. Got some cool pictures. I know my, you know, my photos from down there are not nearly as cool as some of the professional ones that are taken in the stadium. But uh, yeah, I think I think we need to probably post our own our own version on the Twitter account and stuff and, and give the love uh, where it's due. There, um, we'll you know, obviously we had the uh, the the noise last week from uh, the Dallas supporters groups about tickets and about instruments. And we covered that thoroughly on our, our midweek pod last time out. Um, but I, I did want to say uh, since, since it was revealed later that the ticket allotment was actually more than the normal 200 Austin FC gave Dallas 300. And then they held, it looked like, uh, 225 of those back for friends and family of the team, traveling VIPs, et cetera, that it was like only 75 to hundred tickets that actually went to their supporters. So I saw some Dallas fans saying that they bought tickets elsewhere and just walked up there and joined oh, nice. their supporters, which is great. I think that's great. Right. That's um, cool. But again, I just didn't want to, I thought that was hilarious last week when that came out where it's like, yo, get your own front office in order before you fucking come at us and tell us to call ours. Yeah, uh, I don't know if that was I don't know if that was conveniently left out, but uh, yeah, it doesn't look great when that comes out <laughs> after the fact. Uh, yeah. But they, I mean, I thought they had a good showing. Of course, and 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 you know they brought their their boomsticks and everything, which again, that's really all you can do to get creative. You know, we tried yeah. to do the kazoos down in San Antonio, and those got confiscated. And uh, yeah. the the boomsticks was was nice, and and again, you obviously can't hear those guys. Um, as much as we have during the regular season meetings. Um, but even, even when they were down, you know, and we shit on them a lot and we will, uh, it's not the last time on this podcast that we'll say some snarky things about Dallas, but uh, you know, in all seriousness, the, those guys, I thought they brought it last night and there was a significant portion of red shirts in the crowd too. You know, I would say two, 3% of the crowd, um, so it was, it was a good traveling contingent or maybe Dallas fans that live here. And I'm glad they finally uh, didn't walk out of Q2 with their heads held high. Because uh, yeah. whether it's been Dallas coming here or the U.S. men's national team, the fucking Dallas <laughs> players score way too much at Q2. And it was nice for that to, to take a turn last night. Um, well, let's get into it here. Obviously, the two lineup changes. Um, Danny for Valencia, which I, I don't think we were surprised by at all. Yeah. Um, but then Gite for Maxi. That surprised me. That was, yeah, that was, that was definitely eye opening. Uh, 
I think worked. both of us, when we saw that we were just, we had just parked, I think, when the lineup came out. And I think both of us kind of thought about it for a minute and both came to the conclusion that we really liked the change. Um, yes. I think for me, E, it was the ability to bring Max Iruti off the bench, already well, re- well rested, excuse me, because uh, obviously only played 45 last week. Uh, but being able to unleash him late in the game to uh, turn up the high press and bring that energy. Although Austin wasn't pressing as much as we're, we're used to seeing them do last night. Um, I guess just on the surface, I thought that was an interesting move and one that I was excited to see. So what were your thoughts on the lineup? I think after a little discussion, I, I was all for it as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and it worked. It worked out quite well. Um, yeah. Moose played great, obviously. Um, totally spent himself mm-hmm. and got us that much needed first goal on the board first, which is yeah. a nice little start for us. 2 1. I don't want to say who called it, but. Yeah, hey, oh, that's another thing. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, you. I was thinking when I, I brought you in at the beginning through the, through the intro that I had thought of one. Earlier, I was workshopping earlier today. Mm-hmm. Something about you know, Nostra, Nostra Emus or something. You know, something <laughs> like that. Two one, nice call by you. Um, <laughs> I did want to share. You know, speaking of of uh, coaches, this is this is from or tactics, I should say. Uh, getting this from our, our buddy Tim Thompson on Twitter, um, posting uh, snippets of a, a article on MLSsoccer.com. And Stuver said post game, you saw that we were playing with two defensive midfielders today and our wingers were kind of tucked inside a little bit, just kind of preventing the middle. You could tell it frustrated them a bit. They had to go around us. They didn't have an answer there in the first half and they couldn't break our line. So credit the game plan and credit for our guys going out and nailing it. And then the article goes on to say um, that uh, after Austin went up to nil, they, we, that they dropped into a 4-4-2 block. On defense, frustrated Dallas was pressing and build-up play. And Danny Pereira said, it's it's really annoying playing against a team that sits down. That was the plan, kind of sit low and try to counterattack. So it's almost like Austin went into this Ooh. game, at least what they're saying after the fact, is that they almost went in with the plan that teams have been attacking us with for the last two and a half months or so. Yeah. Um, and it, clear, it clearly worked. Um yeah, so shout, out, shout out to to Wolf, yeah, and and the whole staff for yeah. for uh, that game plan, and it really came. I mean, fast and furious at the beginning of this match. We mm-hmm. weren't even too full. I mean, it's the second minute, right? But on the clock, the clock showing like a minute twenty, and you get a lean yeah. across into Diego, so from right to left, and it's really like right on the back post. Falls to Diego's foot, and he tries to kind of push it back across yeah. the net. And he gets past Martin Poss, and then Matt Hedges clears it right off the line. Yep. And so almost an instantaneous uh, goal for Austin, but unfortunately denied there. I mean, that was <laughs> yeah, that just that just started the whole yep. first half. Like it, and again, like I thought they could have had more than two goals. I, I totally agree. Uh, after watching some highlights more today, uh, mm-hmm. I felt the same way. Um yeah, uh, that got us. That set the tone for us, really. I mean, mm-hmm. we were up right away. I, did it? Was it? A, did it go out as a corner, or did we get a throw there? Uh, I believe that they just clear, hedges just cleared it. Um, I don't think that one that in bounds. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Really, I feel like so. I may. I may be mistaken. Um, there was, was some. Even, there was if some got, even if he cleared it, we were right back in there. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, very quickly. Um, Nick Lima Absolutely. played great. He he had a lot of fantastic deliveries in that game, and that started us off right there. Uh, I I I couldn't. Do you think Diego was trying to put that on net, or that he was putting it back towards center? I, I thought at the time and on the rewatch, I thought that he was trying to put it in the net. Um, it didn't have a ton of velocity to it, right? If he gets a better touch, if that was his intention, if he gets a little bit more oomph on it. Um, yeah. I think it crosses the line before Hedges can get there. Okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, we see uh, a, a lot of shots in this first half. I mean, third minute, you have Ruben Gabrielson 
Um, I don't think the shot was super accurate, but he gets in there uh, Mm -hmm. and and puts an attempt. Uh, I guess I won't say on net because it wasn't accurate. I think it went wide left. But uh, again, the chance is just coming uh, frequently in the first half hour for Austin. Won a free kick uh, in the 15th minute. And yep. Fagundes and Driussi line up over it. And they both lined up, like, on the to the left of the where the ball was. So I don't know if that was maybe, like, in some situations you would run Diego over the ball as, like, a fake, and then Driussi comes behind him and takes the shot. But as, <laughs> I don't think there's any, like – there's no question about it at this point. When Austin has a free kick – and it's like in range of, of actually putting a shot on net and maybe a few yards past like the realistic range, Diego's shooting it really yeah. since, since, since July. Um, For sure. And we can't, we can't fault him. And this, this was, this was a good shot. It was a good just shot. Just high. Mm-hmm. Um, got it over the wall and that, you know, Jesus Ferreira landing on the, laying on the ground, et cetera. And yeah. So again, just testing pause, keeping the pressure on them. Yeah. And I, I really don't feel like Austin gave them, a chance to catch their breath in that first 30 minutes. Really the first whole first half. I totally agree. And uh, I, I guess that game plan that Stuber talked about in that article there, uh, you know, worked exactly how they wanted it because they did not threaten us really in the first half. Yeah. Um, we were, it was fast and furious for us. Um, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> you know, the, the moose goal comes pretty quickly after that free kick. Mm-hmm. Um, it was Lima. Who crossed that? In for for Musa. Yeah. So I've I've got it here. The um, we did have a couple shots uh between that free kick and when the first goal was scored. Uh, Musa actually had the shot from the top of the box, um, which I think got blocked. Um, but I, I think I think you turned to me and said I don't I don't hate that. Like even though that mm. might have been the one where uh, Seba was like running past him on the left and he didn't see him and he turned to shoot instead and got blocked. Yeah. Um. And then a minute later, uh, Julio uh, gets a shot with his right foot and puts it just wide of the net. And then three minutes later in the 26th, uh, Austin wins a corner. Of course, Fagundes on the cross. That was one thing I guess I, we didn't mention at the top. And I didn't see on the injury report until they actually introduced the team and read off the injury report at Q2 that Zon Kolmanic was not active and was, wasn't, uh, was added to the injury report at some point this week. I don't know if it was Sunday or before then, but, uh, so that, you know, you could have bet Diego over on the crosses. (laughs) That was a a probably pretty good bet last night with him, uh, guaranteed to be. Yeah. Especially with Ragoni coming off the bench. Yeah. Um, but so this cross, uh, from Fagu is actually like, it goes to the near post. Uh, kind of looking for ring. Ruben Gabrielson is over there on the right side. And um, I couldn't really see who tried to uh, head it out and clear it, but whatever it was, did not get a good touch on it. And instead of clearing out of the box, it kind of skips across the guy's head. Yep. Um, I want to say maybe it was Cervania, Cervania. Again, not, not so great with the pronunciations of the players from other teams. Um, we'll leave the, you know, that, that criticism for the extra time boys who I can't wait to listen to that today since they have a reason to talk about Musa Gite. And, and I think it's David Goss who calls him Musa Giete. Oh um, yeah. So, <laughs> uh, but so it, it skims off the, the defender's head and kind of just falls to Musa and yeah. he does what he has almost done like 25 times since he got here. It's like ball falls near him. And yeah. he tries to get a quick, powerful touch. And, like, so many times we've seen him miss hit that or it gets blocked or he sends it off target. Not this time. Nope. One cut buries it. Like, almost Bare. off, like, a little a little volley. Like, I don't know if it touched the ground. I might have to go back and it watch was it. Quick. I thought, like, I honestly, I remember, like, coming back to him and being like, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> so fast. Yeah. yeah. He did that. And, of course, the, the place – goes nuts uh i threw all the confetti i brought on that first call <laughs> so uh you know well worth it but for these playoff games you can't you can't you can't save yeah, the confetti you got yeah. it might be our only goal you never know luckily it wasn't uh because three minutes later um which literally by the time the celebration has yeah, ended sure. on that goal and we get reset and we kick off it might have been like the next possession um 
Yeah. What I do know about this is uh, Velasco kind of has a miss hit, like tries to dribble. I think he was bringing a ball down and it kind of went off his, his thigh and gets away from him. And, and Driussi steps in, takes the ball. This is like near the center circle. Um, and what I noticed, what I didn't notice in the stadium, which I noticed on the replay, is Velasco, once Driussi gets the ball, Velasco reaches out with two hands to try to drag him down yeah. and drag yeah. him back and stop the play and dr- not having it. Nope. Yeah, he didn't really get a good tug on his jersey, but Driussi streaks away from him and just – Left goes move. right at the center backs. Yeah. Right at him. And and credit Musa on the replay. Musa makes a run yeah. that definitely opens up some space. But then, of course, Driussi making the almost impossible look extremely easy, takes a touch around the center back to the right, and just with all his momentum and his body going away from goal, hits it across his body and mm-hmm. manages not only to get it past Martin Martin Pass, I think is how you say the the keeper's name there in Dallas. Um, not only past him, but the accuracy to put that just inside the far yeah. post and in the net. Um, it's just another reason why he's the MVP. And, uh, you know, helping our wallets a little bit with that, you know, over Drewsy one or a half goal plus assist. So we appreciate that. Indeed. <laughs> um and then, honestly, the rest of the half, there's not much more in terms of, like, eventful chances. Uh, a couple shots, but I don't think – nothing too dangerous, really, from either team. Um, I believe there was, like, an Ariola run near the end of the half. Might have been in extra time uh, where he actually gets into the box. Dallas did not have uh, the ball in the Austin box in the first half very much. Right. Um, I think he kind of – he kind of it kind of got away from him, collided I think with Cascante, and both guys went down, no call. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so go to half up to nil. Obviously the vibes are immaculate in the stadium. Uh, you know the the Dos Equis are flowing in mm. section one twenty three. You know, shout out to row ten in front of us, Damon and and our other buddies there. Uh, it's just been a blast getting getting to know those guys, and uh, I think we're talking road trip. Uh, if we get to the final, we'll see. Maybe not road, but maybe flight trip. But, uh, you know, uh, we'll see. Maybe a little 123 uh, trip up there for the final if you have to go to Philly. Um, let's not get too ahead of ourselves, I guess. We got LAFC uh, coming up yeah. this week. We'll talk about that in a bit. The only change at half, he was on the Dallas side, uh, bringing in Franco Hara. Uh, Hara comes in for Savannah. So, uh, Dallas obviously needing goals, bringing in um, more attacking power there with the veteran Hara. Um, Julio Cascante picks up. Uh, I guess I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself here. There was um, a pretty good chance, and I think this like kind of started the momentum a little bit towards Dallas um, in the 53rd minute. Marco Far- Farfan comes down with the ball. Yeah. On the left side, kind of near um, midfield. Nice reception by him. Yeah, I think off like a Stuver clearance um, that didn't really go as intended. Um, he just he just got in front of it. Well, and he does what he does is his job, and that's get the ball to Jesus Ferreira at the top of the box with space. Yep. Uh, so really, the first nervy moment. Um, and man. I appreciate the players, uh, especially the Austin players, after the majority of the action um, last week outside of Triussi's PK in the 93rd or whatever it was. Obviously, the the first Austin goal in the supporter section, all the PKs in the shootout supporter section. So I appreciate all three goals being down there in the north end. Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know, just rather not see the third one go in. Um, but yeah, Ferreira at the top of the box there and he hits it wide, but like, we know that guy's always dangerous. Ruben, Ruben hit it, right? Ruben deflected it. Oh, he did. I, I think, yeah, that went out for like, a cross, right? Classic like back thing that he does. Yeah. Like at the last moment he turns and blocks it. Uh, yeah. Definitely was like, okay, we got to find this dude. And, uh, you know, started to feel the heat a little bit, uh, from them. Uh, when they came down the north end there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I could not believe Moose didn't get subbed at half. This man was – Yeah, good. I forgot to bring that up. Just 
on the ground. I mean, it was the 36th minute was yeah. the first time I saw him on the ground. And yep. that was like, shit, well, you got, you know, 10 minutes to go here, bud, at least. Yep. Uh, yeah. So uh, I was shocked that we didn't get him out um, <clears throat> at halftime. Yeah. Um, but still, you know, I was thinking about the game earlier, and I was like, I, I don't – Dallas didn't play poorly. No. You know, and I was just like, we – we are the better team. We mm-hmm. have been the better team the entire season. Mm-hmm. We have the best player on the pitch when he laces them up, no matter who we're playing. I'd like, we can't even talk about the Mukhtar stuff anymore. Cause like everything Seba does for us is just it, it, everything we do goes through him. It, he yep. makes us go on every single level. Yep. Um, so it, it, we were just a better team all year. And we, it, you know, we, they've, in the past dominated us and beaten our ass. Yeah. Uh, so to finally get off the schneid there was, was just awesome. Yeah. Well, and, and, and now like who gives a shit about those games in the past, especially the ones last year, right? Yeah, the, for two sure. draws, the two draws we got this year were enough to win Copa Tejas. And now like this is the most important game in club history. It's the most important game that's been played between the Texas teams since we joined the league two years ago. And I mean, I, I honestly, I, I hope we have a lot more of these in the future. I hope that Houston, you know, turns their franchise around or, you know, like becomes more competitive because at some point in our fandom, hopefully not for a while, we're going to have a matchup in the playoffs against one of those two teams and we're going to lose. And I just think like those meeting those uh, other Texas teams in the playoffs is going to just grow the rivalries so much more. Totally and agree. therefore grow the game and the league in Texas, um, which is, is a tall task given we're in Texas and, and you know, the fucking football capital of, of America, almost, right? So like, um, and American football, I guess I should uh, clarify. Um, for the international, for the Wrexham listeners. Exactly. Exactly. Wrexham listeners. <laughs> um, yeah. Good point. I appreciate you bringing up the, the GTA I don't know if he was cramping or what, right? But like, I mean, his was... adrenaline must have been through the fucking <laughs> roof to start. Yeah, yeah. He gets to start, you know. Yeah. He's twenty three. Yeah. He's probably like eighty percent adrenaline. Yeah, yeah. Right. Was... Um, I also I saw somebody point out because when that when he did go down that first time, the trainers did come out. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think kind of went into it. Kind of became a de facto water break for everybody but somebody pointed out on twitter with a screenshot that it looked like ruben was translating for musa to the training staff which i thought was interesting yeah and it's just another that's that's like another like wrinkle that you have on a lot of soccer teams i think especially here where you're usually having a, a pretty wide mix of where, you know, geographically where your players are, are from. Mm-hmm. Um, that's just not something that, again, like being basketball guys, the majority of our lives, like, you know, I don't I didn't have too many teammates that couldn't speak English. Um, For sure. Or even like, you know, whatever language you were speaking that nobody else could speak the language. So um, that's just always an interesting dynamic. Um, yeah to think I, about with these guys being pro athletes. So, so halfway around the world away from their families, their kids, et cetera. Um, yeah. I think that was the thing with Musa, right? He has a kid that he hasn't seen yet Correct. because of the season. Um, so again, man, I mean, obviously we talked about it with his hat trick, um, but it's just every time that man succeeds on the field, it, it makes me happy. For sure. Um, it makes a lot of people happy. Yeah. yeah. People love Moose. Yeah. Uh, People definitely love Moose. So uh, 60th minute, uh, we see a pair of subs for both teams. Uh, And I I, I do think that this really, like we kind of talked about how that far fan interception to Ferreira, like that kind of got the juices flowing for Dallas. We maybe start getting on the back foot a little bit. Um, I think these subs really sealed it because bringing on Paxton Pomichol uh, and, and Nanu for Dallas. Um, both of those guys made plays in the last half hour that created dangerous chances, um, whether they ended up in a goal or, or not. 
yep. on the Austin side, they countered with a Ruti for GT. So the fact GT made it 60 minutes um, after going yes. down so early for sure um, is, is pretty crazy. So uh, also Rigoni for Finley then. Uh, so you get the full, you know, uh, half hour of, of Rigoni, which is more along the lines of what we saw to close the regular season with the rotation there on the right wing, whoever starts gets 60 minutes. And, and uh, then we give the half hour. And I thought Rigoni looked great. And we'll talk about one of his plays later. Again, still not on the score sheet, but oh my God, was he close again. We'll talk about that yeah. in a second. Uh, 63rd minute, there is a Velasco gets gets loose at the top of the box. Uh, rockets one in and Stuver, uh, diving save, hits it out to the left uh, of Stuver. And, uh, you know, the, the Stu chance rain down. Mm-hmm. Two minutes later, though, um, I want to say that this was like a combination between like Pomichol and I don't think it was Velasco. Nanu was on that side, but the, the Dallas just has a, a very nice buildup on the left side um, that ends up finding Frank O'Hara in the box. And he, kind of, I, I don't think he was shooting, <sighs> but like it, it, so he takes a touch, right? And yeah. It, it's at ring's feet and he can't really corral it. And it kind of bounces off of him. And then like Velasco puts it home and it was very similar to the Musa goal in terms yes. of how they, they both kind of just pulled it out of the air and with extreme accuracy and, and force um, put it home past Duver. Um, it was a, it was a, it was a skillful play, I think by Velasco and he's been great for them this year. He's um, good. He's definitely and, quite good. And that is, revealed the hidden Dallas fans standing next <laughs> to you this entire game. Um, That's right. Yeah, I mean, kid, kid standing next to E. No <laughs> Dallas no Dallas uh, merchandise on. No Dallas gear. Was Did sitting not... with Austin FC. Was actively sitting with four people who had Austin gear Austin on. gear on, yeah. And um, yeah, they scored. If I, can, if I can profile it for a minute. He looked like he was from Dallas. Oh, um, <laughs> out of my area of expertise. <laughs> um, but yeah, when they score, this kid starts clapping, and, and it, yeah, yeah, we got. We, as I think you put it perfectly, you and I got a little bit more intentional with our trash talk. Um, yeah, well, you did that for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know, did for sure. Don't put that all on me. <laughs> I, I, I'm not putting it all on you. I just kept saying, God, I hate this fucking team. <laughs> and he's just sitting there. Um, but you know what? To his credit, he was a good sport. He was. He hit my hand at the end, just said, good match. And I, and I said, or whatever the, you know, whatever I was screaming at that point in time. Um, and got him out of there. Uh, but yeah, that was quite funny for him to just boop, get a little dap in there. Hey, wait, what are you doing? <laughs> Oh hell yeah! Just, sorry, Tell you what though, my uh, my butthole got super tight. I don't know if that's too much information for people, but I mean that's one of my favorite ways to describe the mood cool. in a stadium or or at home on a couch watching a game when things get tight. Um, yeah. You know, it's <laughs> it's yeah because uh, they started jamming over there in the top left. And yeah, was, yeah. Oh my! They came. That was a lifeline for them. Yeah, and I was just like, hold on, boys. Well, and so we did, I mean, that was far from the last time that we were, I mean, I guess I I shouldn't say that we're coming off the Dallas goal. There were multiple more, multiple more chances for Austin going forward in the last Mm -hmm. 25 minutes of this match. Next one was 70th minute. This is where I was, oh my God, this was such a great play by Rigoni. Rigoni receives the ball, not completely on the right sideline, probably five yards off of it. And he darts inside as he's known to do, but it, it it seemed to me both live and on the rewatch that it was more in the system. Like he caught it, catch it. He received the ball <laughs> near the sideline and then made the move as Nick Lima was overlapping him and Lima was running down the sideline. And so Rigoni darts in and has space and just another perfectly timed pass to Diego, yeah. like draws two defenders just drops right off. to Diego and Diego takes a shot and, a, and another great save by Poss. Like great save. Obviously they lost and the two goals came in quick succession against Poss. But like, I thought on the night he was 
really good. Like I thought he was really, really good. I, I mean, just like with the with the point with the Velasco goal, there was nothing Stuve could have done about that. There was yeah. nothing Paz could have done about the GTA goal, and Seba hit a perfect strike. Yeah, he's just he's just a god. So yeah, I mean, <laughs> he kept that shit on the ground too, like in some yeah. action. <laughs> um, but yeah, I thought he played really well, especially on the rewatch. I noticed it a lot more on the rewatch because mm-hmm. shit, we had some chances. Like yeah, we had multiple more chances. This Diego uh, shot being one of them. Yeah, and I like the shot from him. And like you said, uh, just somebody who knows who. It's hard to explain to somebody like how Ragoni looks when he plays, but it's just like he knows what needs to happen. Yeah. Right when it needs to happen. He just drops that ball off to Diego and um, yeah, a big save by them. I mean, I think if we were talking hoops and Ragoni was on the court, like I would say he has really good court vision. Like he's got the IQ, like yeah. he knows where yeah. it, like he can see things a little he's bit ahead of time. He sees matter. the play developing. Yeah. And that's, that's something that when it comes naturally to some of these DPs, like I don't think you see a lot of that. Um around the league from, from uh, the players just on the normal contracts. Like when you see these high caliber players come in like him, like Drew UC, et cetera, um, it's just another level, you know, sure. um, 80th minute. So jumping ahead a little bit here, uh, Ferreira gets ahead to the ball, uh, kind of like not too far inside the edge of the box. And like, it's an awkward angle. Like it was coming down near the crossbar. And so Stuver like, it's not a real threat, but it was just awkward. Like Stuver had to yes. jump up with two hands and knock it down. And like, yep. I thought it was lucky that nobody was really following that shot or that header, because mm-hmm. I thought the way Stuver had to knock it down, there was a chance for somebody to run in and try to poke it. There uh, was on the I mean, rebound. He dropped, yeah. He dropped it to the ground there. Um, and I think this was the ensuing possession. Um, Lima actually breaks, breaks a line or maybe receives a pass. Um, but he, he kind of takes it on net. It's like a three-on-four break. So Austin doesn't have numbers, but um, he did. Like, nobody really closed down on him. I think he had a Ruti and I don't th- – I think Fagundes. Uh, he wasn't out yet. It might have been Fagundes on the left making a run as well. But Lima, Lima takes a crack, and uh, it does go out for a corner. Um, mm-hmm. But, again, I think I turned to you because we were eyeing the under on a, on Lima half a shot. <laughs> I turned to you. I was like, there's the shot. Yeah. Um, but I, I – and I think this is on the – corner off of that Lima shot, um, 82nd minute, it ends up getting swung around back to the right side and finds Ragoni again. And, again, like I, I – I just gave this guy so much love for the the pass that he put on the ground in between those two defenders to Diego. And I thought this was like another just perfect cross, which we've seen him do. Like he creates these chances and nobody's been able to finish them yet. He puts yeah. this cross right on Driussi's head and Driussi heads it. And, and again, another yes. great save by Paz. Um, yeah. And then Diego gets the rebound and he shoots it just wide to the right. And so like, again, you mentioned – that there was a lot of there, there were more threats from Austin um, in the second half that then maybe like it felt like in the stadium for sure um, we were trying to get out of there yeah we were again like yeah. you said we were puckered yeah <laughs> and uh, good uh, yeah so again but like keeping the heat on those guys I think it just it it helped con- it helped contribute to closing out that win. We weren't sitting there and giving them 70% possession in the last 20 minutes and letting them just keep come firing cross after cross into us and being dangerous. Like we were going back at them as well. Um, totally agree. And that was, that was good to see that we, you know, even though we were bunkering with the lead um, that we were still taking our chances when they were there. 87th. Yeah. 87th minute. I think this was probably um, the biggest save. Play of the, the game. game for Stuver. Play of the game, yeah. Nanu uh, crossed from the left. And Obrian, who had come in uh, in the 75th minute, I, I guess I overlooked that um, in the notes here. Obrian comes in for Farfan. And uh, was he one of the uh, – was was he one of the idiots who was just not letting Diego take the cross? Because I feel – is he number eight? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so yeah, he <laughs> was like the main antagonist on the – on the corner kicks there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was well, it would have really fucking sucked if he scored. Yes. Um, so yeah, I mean, he's, and he, that was not the only chance that he got. Like I thought yeah. we were having trouble 
marking him. We were um, tired. Yes. We were and, tired. And the Stuver save. Um, and and also credit to Alex Ring because that was a, a much needed clearance after the Stuver save because the ball was still kind of ping ponging around in there. Yep. And Ring clears it out of the box and we get to reset. Um, and that just kind of takes us to what I thought was the last real chance of the game was the uh, first minute of stoppage time here. They earn a free kick from outside of the box. Of course, Jesus standing over it and he skies it. Like almost like the, the the kid from RSL that took the shot uh yeah. in the, the shootout last week. And I think like that was I think you can actually see it like on the highlights that they posted. I think they put the MLS put that shot in there. Um and you can hear uh, the crowd. And of course we were part of that just like you know, hey, like giving giving Hazel Whoa. some shit for yeah, yeah. And I, I thought that was like that was almost like it. Even though there was like four minutes left in stoppage mm. time, like when he missed that one. And it wasn't even close. Um, it was a good feeling. And I really hope that he doesn't do that a lot next month. No, um, we're, we're rooting for him big time now. Yeah. Oh, now, you know, now he's, um, now he's got time to, to rest up and, and work on that shot. Um, <laughs> so Austin advances uh, the game, the next game, Western conference final, mm. Western conference final. Mm. I mean, this team, from the bottom four teams to the final four teams in a year. It's incredible. It's an amazing ride. And I think I, I tweeted this last night in my my joy, my emotional state was no more slander towards anybody. No more criticism. Just, I just, I don't have room for it anymore. I, I don't care. Like, I do care if we, if we win or lose the next game. But if we lose the next game, I really don't care how it goes how it happens. This season is a massive success. We talked about grades at the end of the regular season, right? And we gave an yep. A and an A plus. And I think I said, you can add a plus for every playoff win. This is, this is off the charts. <laughs> I, can't, I mean, the way that they've won both games at Q2 beating Dallas for the first time. I mean, Absolutely. you said it, you said it last week, right? It's house money now. Yeah. But I mean, it's been a wild ride and, mm-hmm. uh, a lot of times, especially in, uh, I mean, you know, as well as anyone, sports and sports talk and commentary around sports is, you know, what have you done for me lately? And it's very yeah. much uh, this short-sighted, you know, win at all costs yeah. uh, mentality. Yes, but, you know, so um, <clears throat> I hope everyone who has been a part of this has taken the time to appreciate what this team has done. Yeah, and it wasn't like you know. It wasn't like we brought in a whole new fucking team. You know, right? We we have our core of guys. Um, you know, and we lost who we lost who we thought was going to be our second best player for sure. Five games in. Yep. Um, and it's just been an absolutely incredible season. It's been so much fun, and it's not over. It, it, we as as the man Brian Sign said last night, we have unfinished business. Another sure, check mark yeah. on the blo- on the box. Uh, I was gonna say, I, I I hope we get to see that sign again in two weeks at Q two against NYCFC. Yeah. But we'll talk that talk about that in a minute. Uh, closing out this game, uh, E. We'll talk about the XG, everybody's favorite stat, till it's not one point three six XG for Austin to 0.55 for Dallas. And what I did want to highlight is first half for Dallas, 0.07. Oh, 18 shots to nine on the night. I think it was nine to one shots in the first half. I believe just, it was. Yeah. Just further highlighting um, how much those tactics worked for Austin in the first half. Um, Drew C man of the match and motherfucking MVP, man. Like I know we've talked about it. The votes, the voting is done before the playoffs, but like, there yeah. cannot be any question. And if you are not kicking yourself for voting for Hanny Mukhtar, then you're just an idiot. I'm sorry. Like, and it's not to take away from what Hanny did in the regular season, but like, it's so clear when the case that people are making is Hanny Mukhtar makes more key passes. Like, <laughs> shut the fuck up. Like, just because this man is on every corner and every free kick for you guys, because you have nobody else, just because Austin has a better team, Drew is still the engine that, like you said, 
he makes it all work and yeah. he shows up in the biggest moments. And guess what? Heine Mokhtar did not. Drew see three goals in the playoffs so far, Ooh. leading MLS in postseason goals for 2022. Um a little more reflection on first win over Dallas. I mean, it again, I think this is something that I want to do this week because going on the road, this you know, we may have seen this team at Q2 for the last time this season. Let's hope not. But um, I think just reflection is kind of my theme this week because we got over that hump of Dallas not being able to beat them the first five tries and we're in the conference final. And I don't know, man, I think it's I think it is a time for reflection um yeah like like you said and taking taking stock of the entire season which i'm sure we'll we'll continue to do no matter how the season ends up and in the off season we'll be looking back doing some fun things but yeah i don't know if you had anything else to add on on the dallas game it's dominant performance great tactics by the coaching staff all around one of the best wins um that we've seen not just because it was in the playoffs and against dallas just a, a really well played game by austin won the game deserved to win the game was clearly the better team for the entirety of the game. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the next game. <laughs> I, uh, I I will say um, there was a, a gentleman behind us who I think pointed out or not pointed out, but like kind of hollered at you and was like, Hey, you're yeah. back from the wedding. I thought that yeah. was cool as shit. And honestly, like if, if our guy is, is listening right now, I don't, I did you meet him? Or I, like, him I would well, love to I hugged him 12 times, but I don't know his name. Okay. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Every time I walked by him, I just I gave him some sort of. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Uh, yeah, man. As, that guy. For if sure. anybody, yeah, anybody uh, sees us, you know, acting a fool in the North End, whether it's in the Cup Final or next season, come say hi, man. We want to like. That's Absolutely. like part of the point of why we did this, right? Is we want to like get to know uh, all the people around us there that are experiencing the the same incredible journey that we are. Absolutely. Uh, so, uh, as we said, as we tweeted from the account Thursday night on to LA and uh, LAFC, it is for the third time this year. Also, the sixth meeting between us, just like uh, with Dallas, this is the sixth meeting with LAFC. Uh, and just like with Dallas, we were 0 3 against them uh, yeah. in the first season. Obviously, the first ever game in Austin FC history, a 2-0 loss on the road, then a 2-0 loss at home, and then the 2-1 loss at home. Obviously, this season, much different story. Only team in the league to beat LAFC twice. Uh, one of two teams to beat LAFC at their home stadium uh, at the bank this year. Um, but <laughs> this holds true in all sports. Yeah, it is, hard, it is hard to beat a team three times in a season, especially one uh, like LAFC, who, like, honestly, I'm way more scared of when they're not playing Gareth Bale. I was going <laughs> to ask you if, if if you would prefer Bale to be playing, because I feel like my answer would be yes. I would love if he was playing because I because we said it when they were here two months ago. He doesn't care about those guys. No, he no. doesn't care. It doesn't have to. And yeah, for sure. But like, but all, at the same time, you can't play somebody like that. I don't care who they are. Well, yeah, you did go on record saying that you wouldn't welcome Cristiano Ronaldo to our team because he wouldn't be all in. I mean, I, I also think that the, you know, the rape charge thing was like factoring in for me as well. Uh, just considering what we went through with Ceci. But yes, also. Uh, similar to our buddy AG, right? Who made the? Who did he make the case? No, Benzema or somebody like that. No, he said he wouldn't trade. Uh, I I can't remember. <laughs> but maybe my maybe my no Cristiano Ronaldo take, especially just from a pure talent standpoint, a little little off base there. Um, LAFC played uh, last Thursday, as we said. Uh, I think we were recording just before that. We were recording during Philly and Cincy. Um, the class, or I guess they, the Traffico, as they call it out there <laughs> in LA, was one of the best games of the year. Um, 3 2, uh, extra time goal there from, from Chicho Arango in the 93rd minute. Um, but a back and forth game. Uh, LAFC scored in the 23rd, 
uh, right before half in the 44th minute, the Galaxy equalize on Grand Sears' goal, then go all the way to the 80th, tied up 1 1. Um, uh, Buanga braces 2 1 LAFC. Five minutes later, Dayan Hovalich, who I would love to have in Austin, <laughs> bring him here. Um, that his he equalizes on his first touch in that game, <laughs> which which we're used to. Yeah, when we go up against that 99 there for the Galaxy, but then eight minutes later, like I said, Chicho Arango uh, with the winner, and uh, LAFC the one seed, one two, you know, as it should be, as it should be, the one and two seed um, in the West. Then on the East side, um, Philly took care of business that night, one nil. Classic Philly, right? Especially early in the season when they weren't scoring a ton, but just nobody can score on them. Yeah. Um, and then NYCFC dominates CF Montreal Sunday, the early match. Um, I felt for those Montreal fans, and I was really worried that we were going to experience something similar because just because just you see that it's in the air, like it's it's yeah. it's just a bad vibe to watch a game like that, and that happened to a home team. Sixth minute, they go down one nil, end up going down three nil by the sixtieth minute. Uh, I believe Georgi Mihailovic. Uh, Got a pulled one back in the 85th, but way too late, 3 1. So, NYCFC, the three seed, advances to play Philly. Um, so, Austin and LAFC will be at two central this coming Sunday, and that Eastern Conference final at seven central. Um, mm. So, if Philly wins and Austin win, we go to Philadelphia for the cup final. If Austin wins and NYCFC wins, we're coming home to Q2 to host a fucking cup final. We're 90 minutes away. It's a long 90 minutes. Yeah. But we're 90 minutes away from hosting a cup final, and we're 180 minutes away from lifting the cup. It's true. And and I'm just I'm just gonna say this because it, whatever I say, it doesn't it you know. My sambas are a different story. Those are undefeated, mm. but uh, we're 180 minutes away from a championship parade in austin yeah, texas right y'all y'all don't even know about those don't know a thing about them yeah. but i cannot fucking wait that'd be fun. um yeah but we got uh two big games to go through first and we're not can't get to that cup final without getting through this one so uh let, let, we'll check on uh 538's early predictions here from their model um, i saw it i saw it earlier the, the people on reddit are not happy 76 What's that? They had it. I some shit. I saw a post. They said we had eight. Oh, that's chance. to win the cup. Yeah, their motto is saying uh, we have a twenty-four uh, percent chance to win this match, eight percent chance to win the next two. Ooh. And to that, I say, keep doubting us, as as that's Felipe would say. Well, and that's you know, man. Like, there's and I, I don't I don't know if you've seen any of this again. You're you're Reddit man, and I'm Twitter man. Um, <laughs> Okay. The the MLS <laughs> the MLS pundits uh, don't seem like they seem to really be bristling at Austin can Austin fans. Uh, Anthony Precourt this morning tweeted out a laminated uh, copy of all those predictions that Wolf held up in that hype video a couple weeks ago, um, and those guys are like bristling at it. And people like I see these dudes with the blue check marks on Twitter mm -hmm. and at MLS in their fucking bio saying you guys are a two seed act like it. Yo, fuck off, dude. You picked, if you picked us fucking 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, and all you motherfuckers were picking RSL in the first match. There was a fucking, there was an article that came out and I don't know the, 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 the I don't know the outlet and clearly they're trash because they started a, they started their article before the the first round with Austin R. Frauds. <laughs> so what the fuck? Like Austin R. Frauds. You ex you expect the players, the coaches, the fans to be quiet and start acting like we've been here before? We fucking haven't. Correct. You fucking morons. We <laughs> haven't been here before. So no. we're gonna continue to act like the underdogs until we actually win, or until you fuckers give us the respect we deserve, and not us, the players. <laughs> I'm on the team. I'm with the team. <laughs> <We're> the team. <laughs> <laughs> so there's just my little rant on. I like it. Those it's a good rant. Idiots. Um, <laughs> let's uh, go into lineup predictions, lineup desires. Um, 
I, I see, you know, you're shaking your head. So I'll, I'll go first this time. Okay. Uh, I think we start the same 11. Boring, not a hot take. Really going out on a limb there, ZG. Um, I just think it's it's the consistency. It's what's gotten us there, um, both in the regular season. It's what's gotten us here in the playoffs, obviously with a couple tweaks. Um, so you're saying Maxi? Yeah, I think Maxi's back in there. Danny, and Danny stays. Danny. Yeah. Um, and I wouldn't be. I guess I wouldn't be surprised if we went GT again. But it feels like a Maxi game to me. Um, and I think again, Finley is so solid. Empty the tank, and what if it's forty-five minutes, sixty minutes, sixty-five minutes? He's been as solid as they come. Yeah. And again, if we're down, we can bring Ragoni at halftime. Yeah. And and inject that you know kind of that that higher talent ceiling i think is is what he can bring to that right wing position yeah I mean, um, finley's been getting the results for us really yeah well and, and one thing that yeah. one thing we noticed uh on the bench last night is we had double striker available we had maxi ruti and danny hosen was active for mm-hmm. the first time in a while i think we may see that again i like the idea of being able to have two of those three strikers um in if we're down and yeah. desperate um but we'll see. What 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 about you? What are you look, thinking for the lineup here? Yeah, I would be really surprised to see GTA start again. Um, so I, I think we're going back to Maxi there. Uh, Finley, I believe, has clearly earned that spot. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't. I, do you think Johan not getting any time was a game script? What like matchup? Because he played. 60 minutes the first the first no I played 45 they got him out at halftime yeah um but yeah I, I do think Danny will will retain there and um we'll probably see the the classic 11 uh that we've had this whole season that's that's gotten us some results um yeah uh I thought the GT was uh the, that sub was just really took me off guard. I like we've been trying to f- figure out what Wolf is going to do, get into his head a little bit, and yeah, that worked. I guess it, it, I don't think this is what I want to happen, but I don't. I don't know if we should be surprised if we see Valencia start here. Um, he did, I believe that that was Danny after Danny's first red card of the season. I believe was the LAFC road match that they won two one, and Valencia started that game. Mm-hmm. Um, and did well assist to, to uh, Ruben on the first goal there. Um, so he's, and again, something I don't think we talked about last week on either pod um, that I think was brought up somewhere else. I don't think I generated this idea in my own head, but <laughs> uh, the fact that Valencia is coming from that Colombian league championship team and had played in these types of playoff mm. knockout that experience, he, you know, he's had that Danny Pereira has not, yeah. um, and so obviously Danny did very well, I thought, with his opportunity last night to get the start. Um, I agree. But I, I think maybe that that is the change, I think, that that we don't see coming that maybe shouldn't surprise us, is maybe Valencia getting the start. But we'll, we'll see. Again, I, I, I do think the overwhelming uh, uh, favorite here is just the traditional 11, right? Do we have any update on Zani? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, certainly not since the match last night. Um, you know, they'll have the they'll have the midweek presser, I think, on Wednesday. So maybe we get an update there. Um, certainly would like to have him, right? I mean, we yeah. saw how important he was against RSL and being able to control that left side with service. We very um, well could have lost that game if he was not available. Yeah, in yeah. That situation. Um, well, I guess there's only one thing left to do. Mm-hmm. Nostradamus. Nostradamus. <laughs> Nostradamus. Easter Domus. I like that better. See, that's, I, I I leave that stuff to you, man. Good. And I leave the I leave the good picks to you too. What's the what's the what's the score gonna be here on I was Sunday? just trying to think about it. Ugh, am I gonna go three two Austin win or four three? Wow. I think I, I mean ugh, we can score. You know, we can score. They can score. They can score. They can do yeah. things. Uh, I think I'll say three two. And uh, you know, is is hot goalkeeper a thing in MLS? I know it's a huge thing in playoff hockey. Like yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You could be from, you know, 
just awful. And you just get a hot keeper. You, he stops everything. You, you win the Stanley Cup. You drink out of it. Do whatever they do. Yeah, I mean, check check this out. The game flow from, um, where is it? Montreal and NYCFC. This is why goalkeepers, and this is to your point, hot goalkeepers, talented goalkeepers, win you playoff games, win you championships. New York City FC, three, CF Montreal, one, XG, NYCFC, two, Montreal 3.69. Sean Holy Johnson shit. stood on his Sean Johnson stood on his head yesterday a couple times. And uh yeah, I, again, uh to your point, I think Stuver in a groove right now, to be sure. That boy uh, Rubio woke him up. He did. Yeah, pissed Rubio. Off. He's pissed off Stuver right now because he's clearly a nice guy. He's clearly one of the best. One of the best. Better than you and I combined. Well, Let's not get too crazy. Uh, that's that's not crazy at all. <laughs> say that about most people. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah not, kind of a low bar there. No. Um, I, I He woke that boy up. Mm-hmm. You know, I and, knew I liked Rubio Rubin. Rubin. Okay. That was what I, what did I say. Rubio? No, you said Rubio, but that's his first name. Oh, okay. That's right. Yes. Um, yeah. Uh, ever since that, that terrible, terrible tackle. Yeah. He's been great. So I, I say 3-2. Stuver again saves the day. Mm-hmm. He saved the day versus Dallas. Yeah. Bad fucking kick save and mm-hmm. a beauty. Well, we're going to go the inverse of last week because I picked 3-2 against Dallas. You had 2-1. You're going 3-2 against LAFC. I'm going 2-1 Austin. Okay. Regular time. Uh, I, I don't think this is a team on the road that we want to go to extra time with. Um, They're just, they're fucking deep. They are talented at every position, just like us. Um, But again, and and, and this is obviously Austin has shown the ability to not just, it's not a fluke that they beat them twice this year. Um, So yeah, I say two, one. And and I think regardless, uh, the thing that we can count on is uh, some puckering. (laughs) <laughs> wherever wherever we end up watching this match um one yeah. thing i'm going to send you this after the pod shout out to mike posting uh a picture of of us four that we took in the parking lot last night and oh, and and the last thing i wanted to say we got to meet our buddy craig tex constant craig oh shit that's right Tex Constant. Who, who won the tickets and got to bring his whole family to the decision day match and so that was really cool to be able to to meet him craig from what i remember Great dude. <laughs> and we were having fun. Yeah. Uh, you know, like Sorry, I said, I hugged you too many times. Text constant Craig. There, there was uh, a lot of hugs, a lot of uh, meeting people <laughs> that, you know, Brian knew and Mike knew and stuff. Yeah. Got to meet Brian's wife, which was great. Some um, BLA chance broke out. Some beat. Oh, and I mean, as a Spurs fan, those are near and dear to my heart. Um, yeah. So I couldn't even watch the Lakers yesterday. Yeah. Because I didn't yeah. want to, as you said, it could be out in the air. Yeah, yeah. You had to boycott everything. Yeah. Uh, I don't think you can watch. And this shouldn't be hard for you because the Lakers blow. Um, but I don't think you can watch them all week. Though. Make it all season and we got a deal. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to twist my arm to not watch the fucking Lakers. So. We now- will- no, you have to watch them. They're on national TV all the time. <laughs> now that uh, we, we've gotten completely off the rails and into our That's NBA true. talk, I think we'll, we'll go ahead and wrap it up here on this Monday evening. Uh, obviously still six days away from the Western Conference final, Austin FC at LAFC. Um, appreciate everybody being with us, as always. Uh, we know there's a lot of uh, awesome – very talented, hardworking uh, content outlets out there doing stuff around this team. And we, we uh, definitely appreciate that you choose to spend uh, an hour or maybe 30 minutes if you 2x the pod, <laughs> which is something that I, I like to do with uh, how deep my podcast rotation is. Mm. Uh, and and yeah, I, mean, I don't think there's anything. Good luck, uh, safe travels to anybody who's making the trip. I know I don't have to say be loud. I know we'll hear you guys on the broadcast, uh, especially after we take the lead and it's quiet in the bank except for the Verde fans. 
Um, yeah, and then we'll see everybody at Q2, right? Let's go NYCFC. Let's go Austin FC. Uh, e, I can't wait to spend one more 90-minute period at Q2 with you and all our buddies in the North End. Um, and now I'm just rambling, man. I don't, I don't want it to end because I don't <laughs> – you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, yeah. I just want to talk about Austin FC until kickoff at 2.18 p.m. on Sunday, but uh, can't do that. We'll get out of here. Follow the show. Uh, rate, review, and subscribe wherever you get your podcast. If you got five seconds, helps us out. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe, hit the like button. Helps us grow the channel and continue contributing to this fantastic Austin FC community that we all are a part of and love. So for Ian, I'm Zach. Everybody enjoy your week. We will talk to you on Sunday, probably over the week on Twitter. We'll be talking some shit to LAFC fans before we know it. Tacos over burritos. <laughs> Until Sunday, vamos Austin FC. Goodbye.